什么 ？Yes. Now, today we are trying out the Neumann TLM forty-nine, a transformerless large diaphragm cardioid microphone, and it sounds like this for my voice. While for right and left, we have the two Sennheiser MKH fifties as per usual. We are going to have a good a isma time today. Going to relax, tingle, and have a good time with. Yes. Again, I'm going to do everything. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to learn anything unless you really want to. But the best thing you can do really is to sit back, relax, lie down, drift off, and let the moves seep into your brain unconsciously, with no effort whatsoever. You, my friend, deserve. To relax. So, what are we doing today? There is this beautiful game that I have right here on my phone, played by Michael Tal in a simultaneous exhibition. He was playing some twenty, thirty players back in nineteen seventy-four. And step one will be to get it onto the paper. From the phone, and step two is going to be to get it from the paper into my brain. One of the many people Tal was playing at the same time in this simultaneous exhibition was an amateur player by the name of Walter Chandler. Simultaneous exhibition was played in Liverpool in 1974. So, what did Misha have in store for us? Let's check it out on the phone here. Okay, we see E4 and D5. D5. This is the Scandinavian defense employed by this amateur. And theory goes. And I can see that's what Tal plays. That you capture this pawn. E takes d5, and queen takes d5, luring out the queen, but maintaining a very solid structure. This is a respected opening, but it is dangerous to allow moves like knight c3, which is the next move. It's dangerous against an attacking genius like Michael Tal. The queen goes back to d8, one of the main theoretical moves in this position. Now let's write all of that down. E4, e, e4, d5. Takes queen takes knight c three and queen d eight. Okay, what happens then? What happens then? D four and knight f six. I don't know if this is theory. I don't know too much to be honest about the Scandinavian defense. Even though I am Scandinavian myself, bishop to c4 makes a lot of sense. It attacks f7. What happens next? Let's think about that. Okay, we see pawn to d6, making it harder to reach f7. F7 here. Square here, only protected by the king, 
notoriously weak square, and it is a square that you want if you're ever to play against an attacking maniac like Michael Tal. You want to protect this, but you are hemming in this bishop here. So just knight f3 by Tal, we are trying to memorize this. I will go over it many times. And bishop b4, pinning this knight. Let's write it down. Bishop c4, d6, knight f3, and bishop b4. So, and now what? Now we see just castles by Tal. Yes, just ignoring this. Uh, you could come in and capture here and double the pawns, but I guess that would just be a waste of time. So what do we see after castles? We see knight bd7. So trying to develop the pieces. Uh, we could have seen castles here. Maybe that would have been a wise move. And queen to e2. Already looking at the king a bit reminiscent of the Morphe game we covered in the last video with also a queen e2 and sacrifices on e6. After queen e2 we see bishop takes c3. So capturing the knight there, capturing the knight there, capturing the knight there. That is of course recaptured. B takes c3. Bishop for knight exchange, but you could argue that you are doubling these pawns. Maybe it's a positional weakness, but I mean, are you really going to waste time moving the same piece twice in the opening against the magician from Riga? That's what they called Tal. And why? Because he had this ability to just may wave his magic wand and do seemingly impossible things with these just unbelievable spectacular sacrificial attacks there's a reason he is probably the most studied chess player in all of chess history and after b takes he's okay now we do see castles so a little bit of respect for the attacking genius trying to get the king to safety. Now let's write it all down. Castles, knight bd7, queen e2, bishop takes c3, b takes c3, and castles. Let's write it down. So, what will we see now? Okay, so after castles, bishop, g5, pinning the knight to the queen, and rook, e8, and we are putting the rook here opposite the queen, opposite the queen, probably hoping for some push here. Uh, to open everything up and get active. Maybe some c5 move later also. So problem here is it looks like white is just controlling e5 very well. So what will we see? Let me take a look here. Yes, just knight e5. This knight cannot be captured. We would recapture with the pawn and then we would be attacking the pinned piece and the pinned piece couldn't move so that would be winning for white because if you move it you lose the queen if you don't move it we're going to capture it with the pawn okay wow paradoxical move here knight f8 knight to f8 by black so trying to protect all the squares and there is a saying with a knight on f8 it can't be made. Um, 
but does that work against Tal? I heard somebody say that some people like Magnus Carlsen or in history Capablanca or Karpov are endgame specialists, meaning towards the end of the game when there are only pawns and maybe a single piece for each side left, they know all the theory and they understand that very much. They said Tal is not an endgame specialist. He's not an endgame specialist. He is an end the game specialist and if your plan is to set up a position where a child can't checkmate you good luck okay let's see yes f4 just going straight for the kill trying to open up this rook trying to use this pawn as a battering ram and nicely we see c5 actually very principled response from black so attacked on the flank you counter attack in the center but we see rook on a to d1 solidifying and just defending this pawn also putting the rook on opposite diagonal from the queen quite nice so we are actually threatening to just play pawn takes pawn unveiling an attack on the queen here so queen d6 okay so i guess what this is about is if pawn takes pawn we can play queen takes pawn in response which would be check and we would get out of the attack like that get out of the attack like that Do you like this microphone, guys? My dear viewers, I would use it more if it wasn't so huge that it obscures my vision of the board. <laughs> it's it's kind of the problem with this mic, but it does have this large diaphragm, so you can hear all the details of my voice. I kind of like it. It's, I have had this microphone for a long time okay let's see what's going on here after queen d6 we see f5 just pressing on it looks like it's going to be a short game um, we have two active rooks one looking at dangerous f7 one looking at the queen bishop is active knight is active pawn is active queen is active we have good center control and we are trying to open the game up with this pawn here as a battering ram so the opening of the game with uh, also maybe you know maybe you don't know that if you have two bishops against uh, two knights and only one bishop here it will benefit you to open up the game because the knights they like a closed game with a closed center where the pieces can't move and this can very quickly turn into a wide open center where the long scope of the bishops um, will give you a marked advantage i love just over pronouncing words into this microphone okay let's see what happens for a couple more moves and then let's write it down knight d5 okay so trying to block this diagonal towards the queen and let me see the next move oh oh i think i'll write everything down up to here and while i do you can uh you can just look at this position i don't want you to think i don't want you to calculate i don't want you to exert yourself in any way just look at it and feel how beautiful it is and maybe build up a bit of anticipation to the next move because now we are going to see some vintage tall stuff bishop g5 rook e8 knight e5 knight f8 f4 c5 rook d1 queen d6 f4 c5 rook d1 Queen d6, 
F596 and let's write it down. Like so. Okay, here it comes. Knight takes f7, like so. Nice. Just saying, I don't need the extra pieces. I am tall. What I need is access to his majesty, the king. King takes f7, like so. And what is the follow-up? A nice little double check with f takes e6 check from the rook and from the pawn so there is no time to play bishop takes pawn or anything obviously king takes pawn doesn't work because it's protected and you're also checked by the rook so king back to g8 is the only move here and e7, pawn to e7. So this opens up the diagonal here. So this knight is now pinned to the bishop on c4 and cannot move. Of course, this knight here on f8 is attacked. So therefore we see knight, knight, from f8 to e6. Nicely defended by the bishop desperately trying to hold but let's contrast the two cannons the rooks one is on f1 one is on d1 we have the queen on e2 we have the bishop on g5 the bishop on c4 and the pawn here the forward pawn on e7 every single one is doing something really active and even some of the pawns are very, very aggressive. This looks like it may end soon. How can black try to defend this? Okay, first Tal plays d takes c5. This is clear because now the rook is also attacking the pinned piece. The bishop is attacking. He is allowing queen takes c5 with check trying to get out of it surely that's important surely that is important surely surely but actually just a very cool headed king h1 by Tar. just moving the king out saying okay you have the move again what are you going to do what are you going to do? Interesting, knight takes c3. Attacking the queen. Even though we are now at two attackers at the knight on e6. So black is banking on getting this pawn and saying, I will win a tempo against your queen. And then I will find a way to defend my knight. Okay, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Like this is why we study chess. Just look at these marvelous, marvelous, marvelous games. Tal does not move the queen. No. No, 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 no. Just rook d8. Because if knight takes queen, rook takes e8 is checkmate. There's no way you can interpose the knight. The knight is pinned. That is beautiful. That is so tall. That is so, so tall. But okay, bishop d7. From black, now the rooks are connected. And we have no time to play rook takes bishop because knight takes queen. We are hanging 
the queen. We can play rook f8 because the queen is defending f8. So rook f8, rook, if we saw rook f8, it would be rook f8, check, rook takes rook, check, like rook takes rook again, pawn takes, promoting to queen, and then queen takes f8 at the end of that variation. Which explains, which explains Tal's next move. So he's been baiting a sacrifice of the queen on e2 for a couple of moves, and it's not been possible, there hasn't been time to, to capture it there. So what does he do? He plays, this is beautiful. This is so nice. He plays queen e5. And this is a fork. Notice the queen is not defended on e5, but it is attacking the queen and it is attacking the knight. So black played, queen takes e5, queen takes queen. Almost for free, right? It's just one small detail. Just one small detail. So what had what did Tal have in mind here? Imagine he's playing 24 other people at the same time as this game. Usually when grandmasters they play simultaneous exhibitions like this, they play pretty cautiously, play, play, play pretty safely, because they only need to be up a pawn, to have one a pawn or something, or have a slightly better position. And so they'll just play risk-free, simple positions and then win in the end game without taking any risks. And Tal is just like, no, that's boring. That's boring. What is the last move? It's the last move of the game. Why did Tal give up his queen like that? So currently this bishop is doing something. It's protecting this pawn. This rook is threatening this rook and this rook and trying to go for a checkmating attack against the king. This bishop is pinning this knight to the king. So the rook on f1 isn't doing anything. So let's play rook <laughs> f8 check. And that is where Chandler, Walter Chandler resigned in the simultaneous exhibition. The next step, of course, is we're going to look at the game again, trying to understand the tactics uh, a bit more. So before I put the pieces up again and try to understand this game and memorize it and learn it by heart, let's just understand why Black resigned. There is only one legal move here. Remember that knight cannot capture the rook because it's pinned the king. So there is only one legal move, because the king cannot capture the rook, because it's defended by the pawn, and the only legal move is rook takes rook. And here you're not capturing with this rook, that would allow rook takes rook, you are capturing with the pawn, and you can promote this with checkmate to either a queen but I think Tal would prefer a rook, as it is the less valuable piece. And if you look at Tal's game, games, he usually wins uh, being down material. He seemed to prefer to have less power on the board, but better positioned. This would be checkmate. And this is why we sacrificed the queen. So it wasn't on c5, because if it was on c5, queen could capture here. And then rook would capture, and this rook would capture. So let's write it down. Let's write it down. Get to the final position here. Write it down, write it down, and then go, go over it again. Knight takes f7, king takes f7, f takes e6, king g8. E7, knight, E6, D takes C5, 
Queen takes c5, check. King h1, knight takes c3, rook d8, bishop d7, and queen e5. Such a beautiful move. Queen takes e5, and then rook f1, and black resigns. Let's write it down. And one, zero, four white wins. Let's set up the pieces again and look at the game. Let me just take this paper. I can put that over here so I can easily read it for the next playthrough where I try to get it from the paper into my brain. So we reset the board. Okay. So we are back at the starting position. And I'll just go over the moves pretty quickly and make a note of whatever memory hook comes to mind in order to try and so e4, d5, the Scandinavian, I'm Scandinavian, that's how I remember that. e takes d, queen takes d5, knight c3, attacking the queen, and queen d8. Queen d8 is one of the main moves, and I'll try to remember queen d8 by thinking about how uh, this amateur player against Tal was playing um, a lot on his own side of the board. He wasn't trying to go for queen a5, which is one of the more aggressive ways to play the Scandinavian defense. d4, knight f6, bishop c4. I don't know how to put it into language, um, but the bishop on c4 plays a huge role in the game. So I think it would be pretty easy to remember the bishop going to c4, looking at f7, the weakest point in black's position here. And d6, trying to blunt the bishop, knight f3 developing and bishop b4 pinning the knight talic knows castles knight bd7 maybe black should have castled here just queen e2 like in the movie game setting up attacks against the king this move that I'm very critical about, this is maybe where black really gets in trouble. Bishop takes c3, b takes c3, and castles for black. But now bishop g5, bishop g5, pinning the knight, rook e8, looking at the queen, but knight e5, very strong move, cannot be captured, Tal is really in control in this game. Knight f8, even with a knight on f8, it will be mate. Even with a knight on f8, it will be mate, should be pretty easy to remember. And f4, of course, we want to activate the rook. c5, when attacked on the flank, respond in the center. Just rook a to d1, protecting the pawn. Queen d6, protecting black's pawn. f5, pressing 
onwards, knight d5, trying to block the diagonal of the bishop, but the nice sacrifice, knight takes f7, king takes f7, and here the attack just flows beautifully with all the active pieces, f takes e6, double check, therefore king back, on d8, king back to d8, e7, clearing the path for the bishop, attacking the knight, and defending f8 for a rook that can land there, knight, knight e6, and nicely just d takes c5, allowing queen takes c5, check, but we remember this, because it's very obvious that you have this vulnerable piece that can't really move, and we want to open up the rook against the piece. After this check, just king h1, no problem, because what are you going to do now? Well, black is trying to win tempi against the queen, so knight takes c3, and we just leave the queen there and play the very nice rook d8, so rook d8, if knight takes queen, that will be mate. Therefore, bishop d7, and here the very nice queen sacrifice. So Natal is okay sacrificing the queen, but he's not going to do it where black wants it to be sacrificed. No, it's not going to be on e2, it's going to be on e5. Queen takes e5, at least he got his queen, right? But rook f8, and that is the end of the game, because the only legal move is rook takes rook, and then pawn takes on f8, promoting into, I would guess, a rook. Again, just reinventing the wheel or the rook here, and that's checkmate. Okay, now let's, uh, let's just look at the game one more. Okay, so I'm going to take the paper away, see if I can remember this, see how far I can go. e4, d5, the Scandinavian, e takes d5, queen takes d5, and knight c3, this is all theory, and queen back to d8, the sort of the sort of less aggressive move, respecting Tal very much, but maybe not understanding how to play against him. d4, just taking control of the center. Knight f6. What is the move here? It's bishop c4, because we could play knight to f3, but we know we need this bishop to attack f7. In response to that, I remember that we are blunting the bishop. So maybe you noticed me using that word blunting. Blunting the bishop, there's a bit of alliteration. Blunting the bishop before it goes bananas. It helps me remember that I put like word hooks. It's a memory technique. So blunting the bishop with pawn to d6. Now, knight f3, pretty sure, and knight bd7, right? Or is this, am I correct here? So here I'm a little bit unsure, I will take a look at the notes. Yes, yes, sorry, it is d6, knight f3, but it's not knight bd7. So my intuition was right there, I misremembered. It's bishop b4, pinning the knight. And how do I remember that? I actually just got a silly idea. Just a little silly idea. Just a little silly idea. 
which is uh, bishop goes to b4, b4, knight goes to bd7. <laughs> so against this, I remember that we break the pin, so it's just castles. There's later going to be a bishop takes bishop, but I think we see knight bd7 now. What is it? What is it here? Uh, oh, we're going for the attack against the king, which is queen e2, like in the Morphe game. Okay, there was just a little cut, 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 cut there, because I actually, I messed up, and I got quite far before realizing, and I didn't want to bore you with that. So, queen to e2, and... And here I thought that the response was castles, uh, because maybe that's the natural move for me to play, but actually the response is bishop takes on c3, b takes c3, and now castles. And after that, we do play what do we play here? Um, okay, so here, um, the natural move is to try to develop the bishop. So I'm pretty sure bishop d5. That's one of the very strong moves in this game. And then rook e8, hoping to open this up after bishop g5, but knight e5, right? This looks very, yes, this is correct. I'm pretty sure this is correct because there is no knight takes knight. So instead, instead we see this uh, rather strange knight f8. They say with a knight on f8, it can't be made against tile it can. So knight f8 and we know it's mate. And we are developing pieces again. Are we at every, can I use this too? Can I use this idea? Are we at every move trying to develop a piece? What has moved twice? This knight has moved twice. That's the only one. All the other pieces sprung into life with just a single move and this is the case here also because we want to use the rooks but we don't want to play some maneuver out in multiple moves so just f4 making this f pawn into an attacking asset and also without moving the rook from its castle position uh, making it a attacking asset as well. And when attacked on the flank, respond in the center, principled move, c5, attacks d4, rook on a to d1, defends, sets up, pawn takes c5 with a discovered attack on the queen, therefore queen d6, so if d takes c, queen takes c with check. How do we proceed from here? Is it time for the sacrifice? It's not, well, why isn't it time for the sacrifice? It's not time for the sacrifice, because it isn't yet nice. And we can make it nice by playing pawn to f5. Didn't even intend for 5 to kind of rhyme there, but it did. And that's nice, because we of course want to have this rook active, and we want to soften up this diagonal towards the king. So f5, yes, and we can see where this is going. So we try to clog up the diagonal. With knight, is that correct? Knight, I think that's correct. Knight, 
like d5 and then we just see knight takes f7 like so king has to take this is also threatening the queen and if you don't take like you're going to be busted if you take but if you don't you're also getting busted real quick if you have to move the queen somewhere so queen takes king takes f7 pawn takes e6 double check king back to g8 and what is the move here we are pushing the pawn to e7 so we now have the nice diagonal this knight is pinned and we are attacking the knight on f8 so the knight on f8 goes to e6 trying to again clock off this diagonal but it's looking not very good and here it is we want to attack this twice so we play pawn takes pawn on c5 queen takes c5 with check and just king h1 no problem at all and it looks like we have counter-attacking chances with knight takes c3 because it attacks the queen but of course tal ignores that and can't really come up with a rhyme but rook rook d8 threatening mate that was the rhyme from earlier rook d8 threatening mate bishop d7 now blocking um and we are still we don't capture the bishop because our queen is hanging and we do want to sacrifice the queen but not on e2 but on e5 and we know queen takes queen and rook check on f8 is going to lead to mate is there anything else we can do um is there anything else white can do is there a defense here we are threatening to just capture the knight um our queen is protected so queen takes queen maybe not a huge threat okay of course it is a huge threat because if queen takes queen knight takes we are still no longer defending f8 and then rook f8 is going to lead to the same pattern of checkmate so trying to defend the knight we could play something like queen queen b4 or queen a3 uh, the problem however is we can just bully black and actually just play queen takes knight anyways because you're actually not defending because as soon as you recapture rook f8 is going to lead to mate so wow that's a subtle that's a nice subtlety that's a nice subtlety about queen f quite queen e5 is that you can't protect that knight um and you can't protect the queen is the, can we go somewhere else let's say we, let's say we go to Let's say we go to a3. Queen takes c3. We can't capture the queen. We are queen annoyingly just has to move again. Um, so we got a free knight and we have to look at f8. So queen back to c5 and queen e5 we could try and go for repetition queen a3 um but now now we just win all the pieces bishop takes e6 check bishop takes e6 queen takes e6 check again king to the corner And do 
we have something spectacular here. How about, does this work? Rook f8, check. Only one move. Rook takes. No, this doesn't work. Oh, it does. Pawn takes. We'll make a rook. Queen takes. Rook takes. And that is checkmate. No, it's not. We have the, it was obscured by the, micro, the huge microphone. This other rook here. But rook takes a rook. And we are... We are up quite a bit of material. Tal would not like to win this way, but he could if he needed to. So we just have to defend against this back rank mate. We play h3. And okay, the game is very much, very, very much over. All right, I feel I should be able to remember the game now. Let's set up the board. Set up the board. I hope you are just so relaxed. It's it's weird for me being a YouTuber, and creating videos in a way because so you want people to see your videos, but in reality, I don't want you to actually see the video. Maybe the first, however long it takes you to fall asleep, but I feel. If you fall asleep, my mission is complete. You know what I... That's the ultimate success criteria <laughs> for me. So, in a way, I hope you're not watching this. I hope you're having sweet dreams about sacrificing on F7 like Tal. Okay, let's see if we can remember. Okay, so... E, O, D, 5. E takes D5. Queen takes D5. Knight C3. Queen D8. D4. Knight F6. Bishop C4. And E6. E6. Knight F3. Bishop B4. Castles, knight b d seven, and queen to e two. Is it castles here? That was the mistake I made earlier. It's not castles. It's this move that's probably pretty bad. Bishop takes knight. On c three, b takes c three, and then castles. Bishop g5, rook e8, but knight e5, and after knight e5, knight f8. That's hard to remember that it's right now, but it's when these two knights come into contact, we play knight to f8 and f4, attacked on the flank, respond in the center, c5. D4 is under attack, rook A, D1, defending, and queen D6, defending the C5 pawn, just push on with F5, and knight, trying to clock the diagonal, knight D5, and here the fireworks begin, knight takes F7, King takes f7, pawn takes e6, double check, king g8, e7, attacking the knight, knight e6, d takes c5, queen takes c5, check, 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 check. king h1, H1 and knight takes c3. 
but we ignore that with rook rook to e8 rook to d8 rather threatening mate so bishop d7 and queen e5 queen takes e5 and rook f8 look at this amazing constellation here that is so that is so cool that is the end of the game also it is the end of the video i hope you had a very good time i hope that i will see you in the next video and i hope you're not listening to this only maybe in your dreams subconsciously because i hope you are asleep or at least supremely relaxed. Thanks for watching.